USO and the Department of Defense present the first airborne rock and roll division. A volunteer band comprised of musicians from Cheap Trick, Kansas, LaRue, Streets, Santana, and Crosby, Stills, and Nash. During March of 1985, the first airborne landed aboard the aircraft carrier Eisenhower, cruising 200 miles off the coast of Lebanon. What you are about to see are the documented thoughts and feelings of the musicians and the officers and crew for which they perform. Bill Ehart of Kansas tells how and why the first airborne was formed. Uh, well, it basically came about really from a need of just uh, approaching the USO after I, uh, you know, had watched a lot of the different groups go out on a lot of the different different bases and stuff. Uh, they never really had any any rock and roll bands. Always seemed to be either uh, uh, comedians or country artists or cheerleaders or whatever, which is fine entertainment. But there was never really any rock and roll. So um, I did contact the USO and kind of laid out the idea if I could put some musicians together and. and a, in kind of a composite form from different bands to form uh, uh, an entity in itself, uh, would they be up for uh, underwriting the tour? And they said they would, so that's basically how it started. Well, I, th I think, uh, to tell you the truth, most of the musicians I've approached about this, 95% of them have said yes right off the bat. They didn't care what they were going to do. They were going to set their schedules aside and go out and become part of the first airborne. They wanted to do it that bad. So I think the difference is that some people just have a little bit more control over their careers than others, uh, depending on you know what point of, the, of their career they're in at that time. I came up to work this morning, and a, and a supervisor of mine, a friend of mine, said uh, they're going to have Kansas up here tonight. They're going to have Cheap Trick. They're going to have some guys from Santana. They're going to have you know just guys from all these big name bands that I really would love to see. And I, I told him he was dreaming. I said, I said, I said, you got to be kidding. And I just brushed it off. And he went down the and he went down to his rack. And I looked down out of the scuttle where my shop is, and I could see uh, Hangar Bay 2, and he wasn't kidding. There it was. The stage was being set up, two drum sets, the band was warming up, and I immediately ran down there and, and grabbed myself a seat. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. One might disagree with uh, policy decisions or so on. Um, the soldiers are out here and they're just out here and they don't know anything about all of that. Uh, and you know, we're Americans, we get to agree and disagree, but that doesn't matter. They're here, and I wanted to come and say thanks for being here. Because, uh, for instance, the Eisenhower isn't going to get back to port for yet another 40 days, so they got our show instead of Liberty. And uh, so it's crucial, I think. 
Well, Ike left uh, the U.S. on the 10th of October, and we arrived in the Med on about the 23rd, 23rd of October. So we've been here about six months. Uh, what we've been doing here really is protecting U.S. interests and, and uh, expressing uh, U.S. interests in the Mediterranean littoral nations. I, uh, about two weeks ago, we left Palma, Mallorca, three weeks early on a scheduled out of a scheduled in port period and uh, we came over here off the coast of Lebanon uh, just to stand by as we did as a matter of fact Eisenhower did this uh, about a year and a half ago and uh, shortly after we left uh, we had the here I think whether um, we were involved in conflict or not they're still away from home um, they're still basically doing the same type of thing, whether it's wartime or peacetime, and um, they graciously appreciate the thought. I think the thought is equally as important as actually performing. The fact that we, or the USO, is thinking of them and able to say, yes, let's take some music over to this area, that area, this area, to, to play for the troops. Um, they're overwhelmed by that. Every time I, I get an opportunity to shake someone's hand and, or they want to meet me or whatever, that's the first thing they say. Thank you so much for thinking of us and giving your time to share this music with us. And it is, it is very overwhelming. We went through kind of a dry spell in the military uh, after Vietnam. Uh, perhaps we weren't appreciated so much, but I don't believe that's the case anymore. Uh, we're over here with, with these guys, and they're dedicated. Incidentally, you might, you might be interested to know the average age on this ship is just over 20 years. That's, that's a bunch of young guys out here protecting the interests of the United States and, and uh, extending the, the policy of our government. Uh, and these guys are dedicated. And, and when, when you guys take the trouble to come out here and visit us, uh, we feel like the country's really behind us. It, it's a big boost. Uh, we've been at sea for quite a while now, expected to be in port. In fact, expected you guys to come and visit us in port. Thought when we didn't go with the Lebanese uh, crisis that you wouldn't show at all. Hey, great. Nice to have you out here. We really appreciate it. <laughs> They're captive audience, especially on the Eisenhower. The average age is probably 20 to, to 25. These guys are rock and rollers. And um, I think it's, I like the idea. Good idea, Kevin. USO, rock and roll, first airborne rock and roll. It's a good thing. Come on away.